Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com. For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique, simply luxurious life, pick up my new book, which became both a bestseller and number one new release in France Travel, The Road to Le Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment, available in all four formats for your preferred reading or listening. My first book, titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, and my second book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, are also available in each of the four formats. Readers can now join the more intimate, the Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which offers the benefits of ad-free reading site-wide, unlimited access and exclusive access to content on the blog, such as the monthly A Couple Moments with Shannon video chat, tours of my home Le Papillon, the monthly What Made Me Smile post, and monthly Ponderings post, as well as the exclusive opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during the annual French and British Weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news, as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart each new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Live's free monthly newsletter, arriving on the last day of each month in your inbox. There is also a weekly newsletter, which is also free, and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cuppa or cup of morning coffee, and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Look for two new episodes of this podcast on the first and third Wednesday of each month. And until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Ables. Thank you for tuning in. Bonjour. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 362nd episode of the Simple Sophisticate. And I am back in the office and the podcast tech sound, whatever you want to call it, that makes this noise as good as it can be is fixed. And I am tickled to be able to be able to bring this sound to you and hopefully in better quality. So I'm so happy you joined me today because today's episode is inspired by a book that serendipitously crossed my path uh, about the end of April. And I have it here. It's a book that is written by a doctor of holistic medicine, Dr. Gladys McGarry, titled The Well-Lived Life, A 102-Year-Old Doctor's Six Ingredients to Health and Happiness at Every Age. And, and, you know, you think about, oh, okay, a doctor wrote this. This is going to be full of science and research and you hope so of course um and it is partially but it what i love about this book is that it marries science and also the things that come from the heart that are unique to each of us so it cannot be prescriptive across the board and what i mean by prescriptive is i can't tell you one specific thing to do And then assign that exact same task or to do to everyone else and they will get the same results. Not true. I can give you what we're going to talk about today and what she does in her book, which are general life concepts and skills. And then you have to choose to be the student, to do the homework, show up, participate, engage. And then the results will reveal themselves as she talks about of a life well lived and a long life at that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. The fundamental ingredient in a well-lived and long life. Honor what makes your heart sing. Life lessons from Dr. Gladys McGeary. 
And so what I'm doing is breaking down 13 ahas, discoveries, tips that are really pulled from the specifics that she shares of those six overarching secrets from the book. So this episode's Petit Plaisir is one that I found or feel dovetails wonderfully with the book and what we're talking about today. It's a choice that some people, not necessarily listeners of this show, but that I think the larger critics world are kind of back and forth on. But I'm going to be brave and say, uh -uh, this is something to explore, to check out and I have my reasons why, and I hope you'll tune in to discover what it is at the end of today's episode. All right, so let's talk about the fundamental ingredient in a well-lived life. So I want to begin with a quote from the book, and I will, every quote that I share today is from the book, The Well-Lived Life by Dr. Gladys McGarry. So if I neglect to say her name after every quote, know that the quotes are hers. Here we go. Quote, I still have yet to discover a secret ingredient that has been proven to ensure a long and healthy life. Well, not one you can put into a blender anyway, but I can help you discover the secrets of true health and happiness. They're based on a simple shift in perspective, end quote. Born in 1921, Dr. Gladys McGarry's life journey began living and experiencing the life truths she later learned that contributed to her living a long, healthy, and happy life. And she is still going strong, and she still does practice, actually. She's a doctor in holistic medicine and has been for over 80 years. Dr. Gladys McGarry's life story in childhood and young adulthood reads like a history book now taught in classrooms. For example, in 1930, as a young child, while on a train from Delhi to Bombay, now Mumbai, with her family who was returning to the States after having lived in India for some years, she witnessed Gandhi's historic salt march. As she worked her way through school and became a doctor, she battled with cultural norms of where a woman's place should be once she gets married and has kids. I'll just say this, it wasn't in a hospital being a doctor. <laughs> and as life continued to unfold, having honored what was speaking to her about what brought her to life, even when others disagreed, she continued to witness truth after truth of the medicine one receives when they trust their heart. Released on May 1st of this year, Dr. Gladys McGarry's book, A Well-Lived Life, is a treasure of inspiration backed by science of the power of honoring our individual language of how we find life in living. In today's episode, I will be sharing 11 insights and ahas that she teaches that perhaps will inspire you to trust what your heart is saying, even if you don't know what will transpire. Here's another quote from the book. Part of what makes mysterious happenings possible is our belief that we don't know everything. I cannot overstate the importance of keeping a sense of wonder about the world as we age. It is what keeps us young. Our souls benefit from our holding on to the idea that we don't know what's going to happen next. End quote. And with that, let's get started. So, all of the components we're talking about today feed into this idea of honoring what makes your heart sing. And that's what we're going to start with. Number one, find your life force. Quote, to be truly alive, we must find the life force within ourselves and direct our energy toward it. End quote. Dr. McGeary calls it our juice and explains that the quote, process of finding our juice is what keeps us vital, end quote. She shares that in many Eastern philosophies, quote, there is a certain energy tied to well-being, end quote. Two terms used to describe this are prana as well as chi. Western philosophers often use the term purpose or motivation. And she continues to remind us that while finding our juice and cultivating won't ensure perfect health, it often is the major obstacle to feeling good. So once we find our juice, that's a huge hurdle we're overcoming that will help us to feel more alive and thus live better and 
with all the science we're going to talk about today and that she talks about even more so in her book, there's studies that actually prove that finding what we do, finding what we love, and thus changing our thoughts, changing our energy, so being more positive, more engaged, more, you know, accepting of the unknown, more open-hearted, open-minded, actually contributes to more good health. When we don't find our juice, both our mental and physical health start to wane. Finding what your juice is may shift and change over your life journey, but keep yourself in the process of finding what lights you up, what makes you feel energized when you are engaged in whatever it is you discover. That is your juice. That is your life force, and it is immeasurably powerful to living well. Multiple studies at the University of Michigan Health and Retirement quote, observed a link between a high sense of purpose and decreased mortality in adults over 50, end quote. Similarly to what Dr. McGarry shares, when we find what is our purpose, our calling, our prana, whatever term you want to give it, the world receives this positive energy from you. And not only is our well-being improved, but so too then is the world's. Why? Quote, the joy finding our juice brings to our lives will ripple out into the world around us, end quote. So number one is find your life force. Find what makes your heart sing. Two, know this to be true. You are as you are, and that is an awesome thing. We're supposed to be shaped precisely as we are, because that way we can fit together. It isn't anyone's job to judge the shape of anyone else's pieces. And in the same way, it isn't useful to try to make ourselves more or less like anyone else or to worry if they judge our shape. That was a quote from the book. And I so appreciated this. We've talked before on the blog and here on the podcast about being a puzzle piece. And in my most recent book, I actually talked about how it doesn't mean that maybe your puzzle piece doesn't fit in where you're at. Maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's work. It just means you're not meant for that puzzle. Don't change who you are. Don't change the piece that you are. You will find your puzzle. You just have to need to, you just need to stop forcing your puzzle piece or trimming your puzzle piece to be limiting who you truly are to fit in. So when she shared this analogy of of being a puzzle piece or being a piece and not changing that piece, it spoke to me immediately but deeply because having felt that, oh, uh, maybe I should change who I am. I'm, I'm just, I'm just not enough, or I'm just too much, or I need to change this, or, or why aren't they, you know, whatever it is. It was reassuring to read that, no, there is a place for you. You will find it. You just have to keep searching. And so what Dr. McGarry then reminds us is for each of us, knowing that we are made the way we are for a reason, to give something awesomely unique to the world, we then need to contribute positively in a way only we can. And in many ways, it is our responsibility to find where our puzzle piece is needed, to embrace it and share it because, quote, each of us is essential, end quote. And when we tap into our truth, our true self, we actually inspire others to do the same in their own lives. Here's another quote to ponder on this topic. When we feel ourselves click into the whole puzzle, we become part of the pattern of life. When this happens, we exchange juice with the world around us. And she calls that the collective um, life force. So you have your individual life force and the collective life force is the world around you going on with a quote, our juice then flows freely and we have more of it than ever before. So it's a lovely cycle of renewal. By giving what we can uniquely give, we also receive energy that allows us to keep doing that because we find joy in it. We find immense satisfaction in it and we thus are given energy and we have more than to give. So that's number two. Know this to be true. You are as you are and that is an awesome thing. Number three, there are multiple streams of juice. Quote, we're able to connect with life best when we get juice from multiple places. A puzzle piece doesn't just click in on one side. It clicks in on two, three, or four. What that looks like varies from person to person. End quote. 
when you find your juice, you may think it will be just one thing. Uh, but in actuality, our life is full of multiple sources of inspiration and energy. And each, when consciously chosen, using our self-awareness to ascertain what fuels us and also what drains us, we can then cultivate a life full of juice. So it could be you find your calling and your career, and that's one source of juice. But it also may be that you find, you know, energy in your relationships. I hope so. We want our relationships to be uplifting, nurturing, fulfilling. We may also find it in our hobbies and how we nourish ourselves, so our self-care practices. And McGarry speaks to this section about how the shoulds from the culture that surround us make us involve ourselves in life choices that should be, and I put should in air quotes in this statement, that should be the best choice when such advice is actually incorrect, even though perhaps well-intended. So for example, if you're asking someone advice, you're like, oh, what should I do? What, I don't know what to do with my life. And someone says, oh, you should be doing this. You should be doing that. This is what makes me feel fulfilled. This is what they're saying. This is what makes me feel fulfilled. And they probably are right. They know themselves, hopefully. I mean, I'm assuming that they wouldn't be just saying that blithely. But they don't know you and what fills you up. They don't know what gives you this renewed energy source. And so knowing Dr. McGarry, who, who was married at a young age, both became doctors, her and her husband both became doctors. They had six children, I believe. They were married for a handful of decades. She goes on to share this experience. She, and she wanted to be a parent. She wanted to be a parent, but she also wanted to be a doctor. And so her example that she uses to, to talk about figuring out what fuels you and that there will be multiple streams of it, but you really need to honor and know and pay attention to what fuels you. She herself loved and loves being a doctor. That was one source, a major source of her juice, but she also loved and wanted to be a parent. But she wasn't going to give up being a doctor for being a parent because both fueled her, both energized her, actually energized her. She dismisses what others said was best and honored what gave her energy. So there were a lot of people during the time in the mid 20th century, she shares, that when she started having kids, they were like, why are you still a doctor? You should be home. At the very least, you shouldn't be a doctor. Why don't you be a nurse? But they really didn't think she was being proper or right or whatever word you th you want to use here. She should not have been away from her children. But she dismissed what they said was best, and I put that in air quotes, and honored what gave her energy. She kept being a doctor, and she loved going home and taking care of her kids. But raising kids and being a parent isn't going to be the source of juice as it was for her for everyone. And that is so vitally important to understand. I'm using this example of being a parent because it is a common one that's purported as including, well, of course, parenting is exhausting. That's what parenting is. It's sacrificing yourself and your energy for the needs and energy of your kids. But I say this most sincerely as a teacher. I know you all know I'm not a parent, but as a teacher for 20 years, I met hundreds, even thousands of parents during this time. And for some people, it clearly drained them. And I know I only see snippets, but I see snippets. But I also saw snippets of parents where it lifted them. It brought them great joy. And I knew, at least from the experience of teaching their children, what they were going through in certain moments. I knew what their kids were struggling with or thriving with or whatever it might be. And I saw a distinct difference. Not ex all exactly the same forms or, or, or presentations of those, but you see it, you can feel it. It isn't being a parent that is the medicine for a happy life. It is choosing what is discovered to be your juice. And for some, it will be parenting but not for all. So when that person comes up and says, this is what makes me feel fulfilled, this is what you should do, good for them, but honor you. 
I so appreciated her pointing this out and sharing her own experience as a parent that indeed it isn't something that everyone will find to be their purpose. And honoring that is vitally important to living well for your health, for your longevity, for the quality of your life. For me, I knew pretty quickly in my life that I didn't want to be a parent, that I wanted something different. I just didn't know what that something was. But I was amazed, especially more upon reflection, how adamant society was to tell me I was wrong, even though they had no idea what made me feel inspired and full of energy. And so that's important to remember, too. Who's telling you what's best for you? It should come from you. And if you are are someone who who knows yourself, you'll know that they may mean well when they say this, and you can just let it go. But if you don't know yourself well, it's going to be easier to be susceptible to those influences and suggestions. This is all the more reason to trust your own journey and your inner voice, your soul, as many call it, and keep searching until you find your juice. You will know it when you come across it. And as mentioned above, there will be many things that will give you juice. Explore, delight, and include them in your life as you will. Some will remain in your life, your entire life journey, and some will only be a part of your life for a chapter or two. And understanding this truth demonstrates you are living consciously and are aware of what fuels you and what drains you. And that is so important. So number three is understand that you can and would be best to have multiple streams of juice in your life. Number four, embrace movement physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Quote, understanding the power of movement can get us through almost anything. It's a sacred truth that helps us in our hardest moments. End quote. From stuck energy to blocked adrenal glands, movement is needed to bring us to good health. Studies continually demonstrate that physical movement, simply walking briskly for 10 minutes, increases life expectancy, and such physical activity helps us move through stress and even depression. Why? Through physical movement, in this example of walking, the brain is signaled, quote, to release feel-good hormones, and these have profound effects on both short and long-term health, end quote. From our mood to how our brain's cognition improves, movement is good, and that includes forgiveness. Let's talk about stuck energy. If you're holding on to some mental pain, some heartache, some some hurt, choosing to forgive, not forget, but choosing to forgive can release stuck emotions. Moving through fear, anger, and disappointment is beneficial to our mental health. And thus why understanding how to become aware of our thoughts is crucial to understanding how they either will impede or improve the quality of our life. If the former is happening, you're noticing that some thoughts or feelings are impeding your life, decreasing the quality, draining your energy, then it's time to make a move to learn something new to change what is thwarting your ability to let go of certain emotions you may be stuck in. So number four is to embrace this idea of movement. I heard this advice recently um, from, from uh, I think it was Marie Forleo, and it's this idea of if you're stuck in a quandary, you don't know what to do, just take some sort of action. Even if it's just to go on a walk, moving your body will start to create movement in your mind and your emotions and your thoughts and things start to happen. You don't know what you're going to discover, but choosing to move physically, emotionally, spiritually is going to help you heal. And that is what we want. So number four is embrace movement physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Number five, understand a necessary transition period may have to be traversed. So you've discovered your life force. You've discovered your juice. That's what we're at right now, right? So you've discovered that. Dr. McGarry points out that when you do find your juice, it is likely that you will have to, in order to do what you love doing, what brings you to life, quote, go through a transition in life. It shows us who we really are. This may require us to make a change, start doing something new, or stop doing something we've done for quite some time, end quote. It may not have to be a dramatic change, but merely a change of the stories we tell ourselves or how you engage with the world or the habits you have been incorporating into your daily life. But it may be a significant change, a job change, a relationship change, a shift, a move, 
When you find out what you can uniquely give to the world and what the world engages with as you give a positive contribution that only you can give, you come to see that indeed you have a gift within you that needs to not be tucked away. Dr. McGarry writes, quote, our search for juice connects us to the greater question of why we're here, end quote. She goes on to address that this is regardless of whether you have a formal belief structure or not. So whether you are spiritually or religiously inclined, atheist or agnostic or anything that guides you in life, when you find your why of why you're here, you have found your juice. And that is the medicine for a healthy and long life if you choose to engage with it. So you can have this knowledge. Okay, I know it fills me up. I know it energizes me. But now you have to engage with it. So number five is understand a necessary transition period may have to be traversed. Number six, bravely be love. Quote, our life force is activated by love, end quote. Fear is inevitable in life in many forms, but it is when we choose to remain in this state of fear that our lives are adversely affected. McGarry reminds that, quote, fear destroys our sense of reason, making it impossible to see things clearly, end quote. And here is the good news. When we acknowledge fear, but don't linger in this state of feeling, but instead take action, either through asking questions, asking for help, or at the very least choosing to stop digging more of a fearful hole for ourselves by spiraling into more worry, we begin to step ever closer to finding our juice. You will appear fearless, but not in a daredevil sort of way, she likes to remind. Rather, quote, as a person who approaches life with an open heart, end quote. When we open our hearts, so we're choosing love instead of fear here, we are opening our lives to love. It can enter our lives in any number of ways, from the kindness experience from others, a smile or support as you make your intentions known and bravely pursue your calling. So number six is bravely be love. Now, when we come back, we're going to dive deeper into talking about love, specifically self-love, and also talk about how we engage with the world around us and the choices we make and how whatever that approach may be affects the quality of our life. I'll be right back after a word from the sponsor of today's episode. This episode is sponsored by Hello. Have you ever tried a buckwheat pillow? They're totally different than the fluffy, soft pillows most of us are used to. And they sent me one to try. It supports your head and neck how you want it to. Unlike traditional squishy, soft pillows, which collapse under the weight of your head, Hello forms to your head. Now, soft pillows allow your neck to fall into the downward bend that create uncomfortable pressure to your muscles, nerves, and discs. Having slept on Hello's pillows, what I especially appreciate is that it keeps me cool. Now we're in the middle of summer right now, and it is warm (laughs) even at night. And knowing that I will be able to stay asleep because my pillow stays cool is priceless. Hello stays cool and dry compared to pillows filled with feathers or foam. Now, most pillows absorb and retain body heat and moisture, making your pillow feel warm and humid, but buckwheat tends to breathe better. No more flipping to the cool side of the pillow. Now, are you wondering, is it time for me to try this pillow out? Let me just ask you a quick question. Do you use two pillows or fold your pillow in an attempt for proper support? This is a sign that your pillow isn't firm or thick enough. Hello support allows you to keep your head and neck where you want them. You can add or remove fill from the zippered opening. This gives you the ability to adjust the pillow's thickness to your liking. It also allows you to remove the fill so you can wash the case. And people have been sleeping on buckwheat pillows for centuries. They have been used in Japan extensively and remain relatively popular to this day. You might also see them on the pillow menu at fancy luxury hotels. Buckwheat is a more natural way to sleep. What are you laying your head on every night? So here's the deal. As a simple, sophisticated listener, 
Sleep on it for 60 nights. If Hello isn't for you, just ship it back and they'll give you a refund. Go to HelloPillow.com slash Simple Sophisticate. That's Hello, H-U-L-L-O, Pillow.com slash Simple Sophisticate. If you try more than one pillow, you get a discount of up to $20 per pillow, depending upon the size. Get fast, free shipping on every order, and 1% of all profits are donated to the Nature Conservancy. Give the gift of better sleep. Hello is a unique gift your friends and family will appreciate every night. Welcome back. Moving on to the second half of our list today. And talking about the importance, the fundamental ingredient of living a well-lived life, which is honoring what makes our heart sing, I want to talk about the importance of self-love. This is number seven. Quote, when we refuse to love ourselves, we shut out love from everyone else too. Self-love is not pride at all. It is gratitude for the life we have been given. End quote. When we finally remember that we have always been lovable, quote, that is when we become love able, end quote. In other words, quote, self-love is the basis of all love, end quote. This will require us to step away from, let go of, choose differently, so as no longer to include parts of our life that want us to believe we are not lovable or not wonderful just as we are. That what lights us up is wrong or lacking or not enough. Dr. McGarry uses the example of the tumor that needed to be removed when she had breast cancer in order to be loving to herself, to give herself life, literally. She had to remove the tumor. Instead of fearing cancer, remember our discussion earlier about shifting from fear to love? So instead of fearing cancer, she honored herself and her body by being loving and removing the tumor. I like that example. It's very tactile. It's very concrete. But the same concrete example of physically removing something that is going to hurt you, that is hurting you, that is going to end your life sooner or going to end the quality of your life, physically removing that, apply that to how someone makes you feel less than. Someone makes you want to shrink or requires that you change. There is a necessity to remove that in order for you to be loving to yourself. She goes on to talk about telomeres. They are the end caps on our chromosomes and how studies have revealed that they are affected by our thoughts. Now you want long telomeres. You don't want short ones. Long ones are, are, are a proof of, or, or evidence of, 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 of a healthy being or healthy you, physically a healthy you. So simply put, positive thinking, which involves the thoughts we think about ourselves and whether or not we are deserving of love, beginning with regularly giving ourselves love that includes honoring what gives us vitality and juice, quote, does affect the way our genes express themselves, which can have profound effect on both our health and our experience of being alive, end quote. So this was a big woo, wow for me. If... If that isn't a reason to cultivate a life of, of, of vitality and honoring our true self and purpose, I, it's hard to say, okay, wow, I'll do that. And, 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 and that's where the science will just be periodically included throughout her six secrets. Predominantly, she's talking conceptually, but then she backs up what she's talking about through studies that have, been ta- that have taken place often repeatedly and proven what she's talking about. So let's focus on that for a second. Thoughts create images in our mind, and depending upon what those thoughts are, we are either healing or hurting ourselves. Our life force, as we discussed at the top of this conversation in number one, is a powerful healer when we embrace it and welcome it into our lives. So number seven is the importance of self-love, and that involves speaking kindly to yourself, thinking constructive and positive thoughts, and knowing how your mind works. Wow, that that's a skill to learn so that you can continue to, to nourish and, 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 and give yourself the love you deserve. So number eight, connect and contribute what you uniquely can. Quote, life comes from our connection, is supported by our connection, and creates connection. We are happiest and healthiest when we are contributing to and drawing from 
our collective life force, end quote. Positive social connections are crucial to our overall well-being and good health. And when you have found your life force and are bravely sharing it with the world, more energy is created for you and the world. On the flip side, when you are drawn to others because of what they are giving to the world, your connecting with them, supporting their journey is equally energizing to both parties. The key is yes, connect, but connect through what you can uniquely offer. This takes bravery because you are making yourself vulnerable, but but you're also tapping into supporting others in ways you may never know, which is why when someone or something speaks to you, supporting them genuinely in ways that are welcomed and you can partake in is a priceless gift given and received. So this is where your curiosity comes into play. You know, follow your curiosity. It's going to lead you to, you know, events, people, books, places that you don't know what you're going to find, but you're genuinely and sincerely curious and engaged and want to learn more. And that is creating energy for that person or that entity that you you are are providing your presence or, or whatever it is that it involves. And equally, when you give what you can uniquely give, the energy just keeps being, it's a, it's a cycle that keeps repeating and renourishing itself. With that said, finding friends, again, creating connection is awesome medicine, but also not something to be rushed or forced. McGarry suggests start with your neighbors and then move on to people you work with or network with at work by simply being kind and curious. When you are living your life force in everyday life, more serendipitous meetings will occur, quote, pushing new people your direction, end quote. We simply need to remain open to seeing that. Now, with that said, we need to actively be aware of how we feel and our juice or life force responds to new people that cross our path. Just because someone crosses your path and just because they say they're connected to you and just because, you know, it might initially appear this is right, this is good, whatever, Observe how you feel in their presence. Observe your energy. That is so vitally important. So if anyone is draining your juice, this is when we need to honor our boundaries, which takes us to number nine. So number eight is connect and contribute what you uniquely can. And number nine is the importance of boundaries. Quote, setting boundaries starts with knowing who we are and what we came to do. We must first understand what gives us juice and what drains it, because that shows us what's on our soul's path and what's interfering with it, end quote. Boundaries is a topic that if you've been a longtime listener of this podcast, you know we've talked about it in depth, and we did so in episode 343, and I'll link that in the show notes. So I encourage you to listen or read that episode or post for specific tips and tools for understanding how to set and know what your boundaries need to be. However, to begin with, in order to have the right boundaries, quote, we have to know ourselves really well. As Dr. McGarry shares, boundaries in our life are a bit different than boundaries as we understand them when it comes to sovereign states, for example. But not really, if we look more closely, and I'll talk about that in a second. Boundaries are set to honor what we need in our life to flourish. And as we grow and change, and life and other people are dynamic as well, our boundaries will change also. But it is essential that we are the ones moving the boundaries, changing the boundaries, not anyone else. For example, another country cannot tell their neighboring country that the boundaries will change, i.e. the former the, the, the first country who is changing the boundaries decides to take more land from their neighboring country. They can't do that as far as that's not healthy. That's not constructive. That is not going to lead to an increased life force, but a draining of that. And we're seeing an example of that right now with Russia trying to invade Ukraine. Nope, that is not how boundaries in our lives work. Someone can't come in and say, you're going to change your boundaries. We have to, upon knowing and discovering what we need, set our boundaries and adjust them as we recognize they need to change to continually support our life journey of living well. So number nine is the importance of boundaries. Number 10, life reflects what you give. Quote, When we contribute positively to our collective life force, our individual life force benefits. We find greater purpose and meaning in our days. We understand not only that we are part of a greater whole, but how we are part of that whole. We align with what life intended for us to do all along. 
end quote. If you are at a point in your life where you feel life is just not going your way, it is hard, it is, it is a constant struggle, and you have lost trust in others, yourself, and or the world, ask yourself the following questions as Dr. McGarry lists them in her book. First one, and in no particular order. If you feel unsupported by those around you, are you truly being supportive of them? And I'm going to say that one more loosely because maybe those people aren't the ones who you want to keep engaging with, but are you supporting anyone in their dreams? Are you supporting anyone in their life journey? So just think about it from that perspective. Next one, are you contributing to the world or pulling from it? Next, are you offering joy and positivity to the world around you? Can the community trust in you? And lastly, are you able to maintain strong boundaries regarding where you put your attention and still find the friend in everyone? In other words, you can still engage with people that you don't want to have entirely in your life by setting boundaries, by being clear. And again, we talk about this in episode that I mentioned earlier, uh, episode 343, um, actually, we actually talked about this in 360, where this radius of respect, you might have to step back from some people, you don't have to entirely let them go. But you choose how you engage with them, you choose in what ways you engage with them, you and choose how you expend energy or, or engage your energy with them. So boundaries comes into play here with regards to how you are engaged with the world, the life reflects your life, the life around you reflects what you give it. And Dr. McGarry reminds that, quote, community is a give and take relationship, end quote. And we can't come to the community with an ask or a demand for a specific outcome. This isn't going to the grocery store. You're not going in, I'm going to pay you this much and I'm going to get this back. It's not how it works. We actually just have to show up with our true selves, give with loving kindness while honoring our integrity, And while we have clarity in our own life journey, having set intentions because we know ourselves, we can then simply let go. We don't know how the support will show up or who will begin to work with us that will involve trust from us sharing and giving trust to them. But so long as we engage with self-love, which involves the knowledge of where our boundaries are and why they are there, as well as our life force that brings us to life, We are becoming part of the collective force that creates the healthy connection we need to live well and live a long and lovely life. I think about this often, um, especially, I guess, just recently, too. We get back from people the energy we put out in the world. We and and it happens for a couple of reasons, something we're actually going to talk about in our next point. We see what we give back to the world. So if you are around a lot of angry people or if you're around an angry person or a negative person or someone's energy, you do not enjoy it. Do some self-examination. You may not have in that moment or the day before, even the year before, been someone who has projected negative energy. But maybe the universe says you haven't learned this lesson yet. You need to understand the power of the energy you're putting out. And so what it's trying to teach you is, you know, those times when you were really, you know, negative or, or couldn't focus on the positive or just venting on someone else and not giving them anything to want to be around. This is what it feels like. And so it isn't until you wake up and recognize, oh, my gosh, this is how I feel when that person's like that. And you finally have learned the lesson and realize, okay, what this is a wake up point for you to accept the lesson, learn it, not repeat it. Number one, number two, assess what energy am I giving to the world and my relationships. And in time, it's not on a particular schedule, (laughs) that energy that you put out there with intention will come back to you. And that leads us to number 11. Lessons are everywhere and in everything. Quote, We live our best lives when we approach life with curiosity and desire to learn from everything. End quote. And this was actually the subject of a recent Monday motivational post. And the idea was that even when things look like they may be falling apart, they may actually be trying to help us if only we would shift our perspective to see what they're trying to bring or make available to us. When we realize that there is a helpful lesson to learn, even in unwanted events, 
the quality of our every days and thus our entire life changes for the better. Dr. McGarry shares, quote, life always has new teachings to offer us if we can find the courage to look for them, end quote. Admittedly, it will take great courage and inner strength to look for the wisdom that is hidden in the unwanted. But when we choose this path, we are ha- actually helping our health tremendously. Why? Quote, we are moving our attention away from suffering and directing it back toward living or life, end quote. Remember earlier in our list today, we, we talked about movement. If we stay stuck in focusing on what isn't working, what is unwanted, we are not helping ourselves, but stopping life from happening, from moving forward. Quote, seeing everything as a teacher helps us make our life a living, breathing process, end quote. Now you might be thinking, well, that is just too Pollyanna positive for me, Shannon. (laughs) But I beg to differ. It is actually more realist than anything else. It is accepting what is and choosing to use it for fuel to constructively move forward to give you life rather than drain your life. Dr. McGarry concurs, writing, quote, true optimism isn't toxic because focusing on the positive does not mean denying the negative. It does not mean we dissociate from our pain, whether it's physical or emotional, or pretend that things are okay when they aren't. Instead, it means we look for what's wonderful anyway. We allow what hurts to hurt while continuing to search for the lesson in it and be grateful for the teaching. End quote. So number 11 is lessons are everywhere and in everything. And this is where it comes back to her quote at the beginning of this episode where she wrote, it's all based on a simple shift in perspective. Shift your perspective on the unwanted things that are happening. Your life will change for the better when you start to say, what can I learn from this? You're not denying it happened. You don't have to say you like it. I mean, here's a great example. I'm just going to use a very concrete one. Um, front door, the door jam or the door knob thing is not working. It, I broke it again. <laughs> I broke it again. I got a new part and uh, it's not working. And I also broke another part. It's a mess. It's still not up. And this is a project I started way back in April when I was talking to the salesperson, telling her what was happening, need, telling her we needed to order another part. I said, you know what? <laughs> she's been great through this whole thing she actually has brought a lot of good energy to this situation I'm so grateful which inspired me to really consider okay Shannon let's let's take a breath I said I think this is the universe's way of telling me to take a breath and stop pushing to get this project done it will happen but there's a lesson I need to learn in it before it will happen so I need to step back I have put into motion my intention to eventually get it done by reordering the part but I'm going to stop stressing about it. I'm going to stop letting it consume my thoughts because <laughs> it's not helpful energy. And we had a lovely conversation after that. So it was a great example of connecting, number one. Number two, learning a lesson, hopefully letting go of stuck energy. And uh, that's how it appears in our life. Little things like that. Unwanted, yes, but not without a gem of wisdom. All right, so moving on to number 12. Understand what true health is. Steer your energy toward life. Quote, true health is about living with the world around us as an engaged, participatory experience. End quote. Encouraging readers to, quote, spend your energy wildly. Dr. McGarry teaches that once we have discovered and embraced our life force, we have an abundance of energy to give and to experience. And now it's for us to enjoy our lives. And because we gain energy by embracing our life force, we have much to spend as we engage with the world and so bravely, quote, tap into your deepest knowing, end quote. Let yourself be who you are. That's the deeper knowing. And give what you can uniquely give. It will energize you in return and create a wonderful give and take relationship that will continue to give you life. With that said, We need to step toward and engage with, quote, things that feel good and help us grow, end quote. 
what energizes you may not energize someone else in the same way or at all. So remind yourself that each of us has to find our own rhythm that works best for us, as well as remembering to adapt to it as what we learn and as life unfolds, reveals is best moving forward. So, so how we engage with that energy and what, so that life force, that those, that juice we've been talking about, it's going to shift and change, staying present with it, staying engaged with it. Well, will let us know how to move, how to dance with it. That's the rhythm. That's the rhythm that we need to find. And it will be like no one else's. It might have similarities with others, but it won't be exactly the same. So you have to go within, you have to do the homework of yourself. You can't just be told or given a prescription. You have to choose to do the healing. Now, don't forget, choosing to and needing to rest is indeed an action. And she writes about this as well. So we all need rest. You don't want to go, go, go. So spending your energy wildly also includes rest. This is a nourishing self-love practice that is absolutely necessary. Some may say resting is being lazy, but Dr. McGarry disagrees and writes, quote, being lazy is when we withhold our life force from the collective. It's when we hold back, refusing to give, refusing to participate. This drains our juice. The purpose of resting is just the opposite. When we rest, we're consciously dedicating our energy toward what's most important to us, end quote. So what helps you grow? To go back to that point, what feels good and what helps us grow. So number 12 is understand what true health is, steering your energy toward life. And last but not least, number 13, turn toward life, your life, and what makes you come alive, quote, Learning to listen to our own inner knowing is the key to discerning in any given moment how and where to invest our life force. And it takes truly living to understand this. We're meant to interact with our lives. The work of life is simple. We must try and fail until we succeed, end quote. Unfortunately, most of us don't come out of the womb or or you know, come into our childhood and then into adulthood knowing what brings us to life. We might have a glimpse of it. We'll have a taste of it. Well, some more than others, most definitely. And there are always anomalies and there's always a different path for every single person. But until you find it, keep exploring, keep following your curiosity and keep putting yourself out there, being kind, being loving, you know, acting in loving kindness, as we've talked about before, we talked about, um, Deepak Chopra's book, Abundance. Keep honoring yourself as you go forward, gaining the knowledge about yourself and applying that knowledge. But this is a truth that has been shared repeatedly here on this podcast and, and on the blog. And, and it, it's been expressed in different words and different phrases, but all are focusing our attention on the truth that you have something that makes you come alive within you. I, tr- if you haven't found it yet, trust me, it's there. It's always been there. Find that and will always be there. Find that and you find your path forward. You won't know what the path will reveal, but follow the vitality that you receive. You're going to receive all this energy once you find it. Use that energy to, 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 to follow your curiosity. And remember to get to know yourself along the way and apply that knowledge to the decisions you make about what you will explore, who you will dance with, and also carry with you the knowledge that, as Dr. McGarry reminds, quote, you are right on time, end quote. Your health depends on you bravely and with an open heart and mind stepping in a direction that brings you to life. So that's number 13. Turn toward life, your life, and what makes you come alive. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. This entire list of key components, key ahas that spoke to me and what I, what I hope will speak to you and also maybe inspire you to read her book are on the show notes on the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 362. Now I'll be back with this week's Petit Plaisir. All right, so this week's Petit Plaisir, I have talked a, a lot about this uh, this show um, over the last year and a half, uh, off and on. And I've also 
it's been a running theme in, in many ways way back when this blog began. And I've done a lot of reading about it um, behind the scenes and gotten to know the writers a little bit and the inspiration uh, behind it, uh, both the initial series and then the second series. And I'm talking about the series on Max and Just Like That, um, starring Sarah Jessica Parker and uh, written and now created. So Darren Starr created Sex and the City and then Michael Patrick King is the head writer and creator of uh, And Just Like That, who also wrote on the first uh, series, uh, Sex and the City. Now, a lot of people aren't reviewing this, uh, this show or, or, or praising this show right now. It's almost as though they're afraid to um, because as we've talked, as they've talked about it and rightly so that this show needed a, a remake, a, it needed a facelift, so to speak, in the sense of, you know, it was reflective of the times in the nineties and Se sex and the city was all whites, all very affluent, uh, very insular world in many ways, but it did bring about a lot of cultural change for women and, and shifting the conversation and the attitudes about living single and loving life and embracing um, a different approach to what a good life is. But at the end of that series, uh, you may remember uh, that it spoke about stepping into a life that speaks to you, even if initially it would not be something that you would have said, oh yeah, that's a good idea. That's, that's, that's a good life. And Michael Patrick King actually shared an interview uh, during that season or during that show. And what he wrote actually inspired a pot, uh, blog post that I wrote in 2010. So yeah, I, going back to that post, I wrote it actually in 2010. Um, and he wrote, it wasn't, he referencing Sex and the City, it wasn't about choosing a man or choosing a bag or choosing a life. It was about choose yourself and if you would watch sex in the city the entire season or all all of the seasons and you have done your homework on the show you know this now i, I take you to season two of and just like that and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I know some people are saying, oh, it's finally got good because Aiden's now back in the show. And he, well, we had to wait so long for Aiden. I, I disagree. I think it's been great the whole time. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I do think it's a very smart show. Admittedly, they've diversified the cast. They, some people think it was too blatant, too obvious. Hey, at least they learned their lesson and they're trying to shift it forward to, sh to demonstrate what New York City is looks like and I mean looks like with regards to diverse characters from different backgrounds granted all of them have money and that's the whole point again back to the quote they have to get your attention this is what the show's always been about it's been fun it's been frivolous but that's what brings this this audience to the show so that they can go deeper to show you something different that maybe you hadn't considered about what life can be not what it should be. And it's, he said this actually a couple times in the podcast in the writer's room recently. He's like, it's about choosing yourself. Miranda, choosing yourself. Che, choosing themselves. Seema, choosing herself. Naya, choosing herself. Carrie, we don't know where that one's going yet, but you can bet that it's going to drive the big point home as it did in Sex and the City, choosing yourself. And, and Charlotte, choose yourself as she starts to step back and dip her toes back into the art world in what she came to life doing. This is where she got her juice. Now, as one other critic wrote, are we supposed to, to is this supposed to be a series that's going to win all sorts of awards? Granted, Sex and the City won some awards and Sarah Jessica Parker won some lead actress awards. And that's the other thing. Does this show need to be a show that is winning all sorts of awards? It doesn't have to be. And I think part of the reason that it is grappling with getting a broad mass of appeal is, yes, we have different generations tuning in or exploring this show that have gone through different life experiences than what the, the, the main stars of this cast were back in the 90s going through 
But with that said, that's why this is even more important because it's telling stories of women in their 50s, 60s, and beyond of what life can be, the choices available to us of living well and to not let ourselves be demonized by the outside world when we choose to live a different life than what society deems okay. And that's why I wanted to 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 bring this show as a petit plaisir because of what we were talking about today. What makes your your heart sing? Back to this whole concept of choose yourself. That's what the driving premise was of and Sex in the City. It is the driving premise of season two. And, and just like that, he said it. He, I'm seeing it. It's going to play out more as the season unfolds, as the seasons unfold, because they're following the seasons. But it's not sensationalized with dramatic drama. And that's the other part about the series that I am absolutely appreciative of. It is showing mature women who, yes, will be making mistakes, mature people making mistakes, but being human. For example, when Che and Miranda were arguing, it wasn't a brawl. It wasn't a big upset, big fight. There was still love there. There was still love there. So being loving kindness, but honoring your integrity and what they needed, what Che needed, but also what Miranda needed. Same thing was happening with Charlotte and her children. Same thing was with Lisa Todd Wexley. LTW, they are choosing what gives them juice. LTW, love her character. The conversations with her and her husband, it's loving. It's still real. They're not perfect. Yes, it's beautiful and it's gorgeous as far as the house and their lifestyle and her closet and her clothes, but it's honoring still her juice, her calling her passion her love and her standing up for herself setting the boundaries but in a loving way and vice versa so I think you know we can't ask the show to be everything what show can be for a show that's spanned basically 25 years that's really hard to do but I think if we look at it through the lens number one of what is the what is the underlying theme that they're trying to 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 share with the, the audience but also it is such a, a triumph to be sharing the lives of women who have lived well. And I know they're fictitious. I know some of these things are impossible financially, but it, they have to make it attractive to the eye. But the idea that there are many different ways to live well as a woman who is progressing through life, having learned the lessons that life has given her, still making mistakes, but still doing very, very well. Um, anyway, I just wanted to bring that to you and why I'm enjoying it. It's um, it's something that's been a treat every Thursday, uh, a bit of it like my candy <laughs> um, as my work week ends because my work week begins on Sunday and I usually conclude it on, on, on Thursday. Most work, not all work, but most of the work. And I, I really do sit down and enjoy that thoroughly. Um, definitely for, for, for the optics, the beauty, the clothing, the, the restaurants, And it won't surprise you, I generally appreciate Seema's character line. And I really enjoyed the spa scene where she was like, you know, wait a second, wait a second. (laughs) What about, what about, you know, being single? Why can't we also enjoy Valentine's Day in our own way? Why is it exclusive for people in relationships? I really enjoy her character. I hope they flesh her out even more. Um, I feel it's really hard having so many characters now to tell every storyline in within 40 minutes that's really hard to do but I hope they're able to really flesh her out a little bit more I've enjoyed her and I'm really looking forward to seeing how Naya's story unfolds as well um okay so (laughs) I I uh I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. All right, that wraps up today's episode, but look for a new episode with a special guest, a friend of this podcast, Elizabeth Bergeral, lead singer of the Hot Sardines. They have a new album being released for Francophiles and for jazz lovers this Friday, the 4th of August, and she is coming to talk about the album, the songs, a lot of French songs, all of them are jazz, some great covers, some original tracks, and this will be released during 
The Simply Luxurious Life's 8th Annual French Week, Wednesday, August 16th. I do hope you'll tune in. It will be the last episode of Season 9 before we kick off in September, Season 10. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bonjour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com. For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique, simply luxurious life, pick up my new book, which became both a bestseller and number one new release in France Travel, The Road to Le Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment, available in all four formats for your preferred reading or listening. My first book, titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, and my second book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, are also available in each of the four formats. Readers can now join the more intimate, the Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which offers the benefits of ad-free reading site-wide, unlimited access and exclusive access to content on the blog, such as the monthly A Couple Moments with Shannon video chat, tours of my home Le Papillon, the monthly What Made Me Smile post, and monthly Ponderings post, as well as the exclusive opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during the annual French and British Weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news, as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart each new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Live's free monthly newsletter, arriving on the last day of each month in your inbox. There is also a weekly newsletter, which is also free, and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cuppa or cup of morning coffee, and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Look for two new episodes of this podcast on the first and third Wednesday of each month. And until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Thank you for tuning in. Bonjour.